patterns. Hypochloremia causes HCO3 retention. Hypocalcemia may develop from increased protein binding of extracellular calcium. The goals of management are to treat the underlying cause and correct the pH. Potassium chloride and chloride should be replaced carefully whenever there are deficits. Administration of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as acetazolamide inhibit renal reabsorption of bicarbonate. Respiratory alkalosis is an acid-based disturbance that develops as a result of increased respiratory acid elimination. Loss of acid through increased respiratory rate and depth will result in an increased pH and is the pathophysiological basis for respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis is characterized by an increased pH and a decreased PCO2. Let's look at client number seven. Client number seven, pH is 7.50, PCO2 is 29 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 24 milliequivalents per liter. The pH is high, so we know there is alkalosis. Now we must determine whether the origin is respiratory or metabolic. The PCO2 is decreased, so it is clear that there is a loss of respiratory acid. The HCO3 is normal, so no metabolic excesses exist. There is no evidence of compensation. This ABG is accurately interpreted as acute respiratory alkalosis. Let's look at client number eight for compensatory changes. Client number eight, pH is 7.52, PCO2 is 31 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 19 milliequivalents per liter. Partial compensation is seen in this example. HCO3 was excreted to balance the loss of CO2 from the respiratory system. Again, the direction of the compensatory change was the same as the primary change. First the CO2 decreased, and then the HCO3 decreased. The correct interpretation of client number 8's ABGs is partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. What are some of the risk factors and etiologies associated with this disorder? When the mechanism is impaired lung compliance, expansion, and gas exchange, risk factors include hypoxia, CHF, pneumonia, ARDS, pulmonary fibrosis, emphysema, pulmonary embolus, pregnancy, ascites, and thoracic cage deformity. When the mechanisms are chemical stimulation and environment, risk factors include aspirin overdose, toxins from sepsis, increased serum ammonia, and high altitudes. When the mechanism is of central nervous system origin, risk factors include head trauma, increased intracranial pressure, brain tumors, encephalitis, anxiety, pain, and stress. The signs and symptoms of respiratory alkalosis are respiratory, cardiovascular, and neurovascular in origin. The severity of symptoms correlates with the severity of the acid-base imbalance. Development of hypocalcemia is a consequence of both respiratory and metabolic alkalosis. Many of the signs and symptoms are related to the decreased calcium level. Tachypnea, hyperpnea, lightheadedness, confusion, circumoral paresthesis, hypocalcemia, numbness and tingling of the toes and fingers due to hypocalcemia, tetany, Chvostek's sign, Trousseau's sign, seizures, and cardiac dysrhythmias. Diagnosis of respiratory alkalosis is based on the client's physical findings and ABG results. The pH will be elevated with a coexisting decrease in PCO2. Hypocalcemia may also be present. The goal of treatment of this disorder is to increase the PCO2 by treating the underlying cause. Rebreathing of CO2 may help when the origin is anxiety.